Welcome back to MobyCast. This is Antonio Edward, and um, I know it's been a very, very long time. I've been busy uh, doing a lot of things recently, and just haven't had time to really sit down and uh, do a podcast. But I've noticed that uh, there's been a lot of um, cool things happening on the site. Um, the interview that I did with Pranil Kandari. Um, 2100 downloads that is amazing to me um, the lack of multi-platform mobile apps when I was talking about how these different developers especially uh, major developers they only design for like iPhone or just Android and stuff like that and that has 1400 um, downloads so far and the interview I did with um, Angelo Fernando is 822 so I'm just uh, quite surprised that there's been a lot of downloads recently and um, I'm happy to see that people are really into this thing so I want to say thank you for listening to the podcast and uh, continue from there um, Windows Mobile 7 uh, or Windows Phone 7 as they call it has been um, doing a lot of um, uh, changes uh, to their interface which is nothing like uh, Windows Phone or Windows Mobile 6.5 or 6 or anything like that. Um, I previously had an Samsung, Samsung Epics which had Windows Mobile um, 6.1 and it um, after two years of using it uh, almost two years of using it the phone broke down on me and I couldn't use it anymore so um, AT&T, um, the insurance uh, part of it, uh, they sent me a HTC Peer. And so, good phone, but Windows Mobile is still a little bit slow. On this, It's a little bit on the slow side. It's not able to handle multitask. Like, the phone is capable of multitask, but it's, it's not able to handle all the different programs that you want to have on it. So that's why there's a lot of developers who really do not design any apps for Windows Mobile. But this Windows Phone 7 sounds very promising. Uh, a lot of people are saying, yeah, they're a little late and they're getting into the game just a little bit slowly. They should have done this several months ago, you know, to compete with Android and iPhone. I'm going to say it like this I believe that iPhone is not going to be competing with Windows Phone 7 or, or vice versa. I just don't think. I have a good feeling that Windows Phone 7 is going to be a phone in itself. And uh, I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. Uh, a lot of uh, people who work in offices uh, and who work in corporate businesses, they have Microsoft Exchange. Microsoft Exchange is an excellent uh, networking software, communication software, it it, uh, it, it includes um, Outlook, it includes uh, Microsoft Exchange to run Outlook pretty much. Uh, Exchange can handle mail, task, calendars, it can multitask between several different users, um, it has public folders, you I mean there's so many different things you can do with Exchange and I can imagine having a Windows Phone 7 connecting it to a VPN network like at work or something and I can have access to that but not just that we're also talking about SharePoint Microsoft Office um, online which which will be something that people can use if they don't have a SharePoint server um, SharePoint is not very hard to get just like uh, Google Apps I have Google Apps on why not TV why not dot TV and that's one of my domains just letter Y, N-O-T, 
dot TV. Yay. Um, and Google Apps runs that. All of my emails, even MobyCast email, except for the IMAT uh, uh, emails that I get, comes directly into my Why Not TV folder. Then I have a bunch of filters. It works great for me. And it has a great spam feature uh, already built in. Google Apps, um, I think, has come a long ways, especially with the upgrade they recently did, uh, which allows for organizations. Uh, they included uh, Google Wave. They even made it where you can use your your uh, Google Apps user ID, which is your email address, to log in to other services of Google. So I believe that um, that Google Apps is going to be competing with Exchange pretty well here because Microsoft Exchange is very expensive. However, this is where Microsoft has they got smart. They know that Google Apps is, is uh, coming along, even though there's, I think, okay, I will say like this, out of uh, 100 companies, okay, I'll say, like, I'll say like this, out of 10 major corporations, eight of them has Microsoft Exchange. There are other forms of email clients out there. Some are using IMAP, um, just a simple IMAP feature with their internet service provider. But uh, Google Apps is uh, coming along pretty well, and I don't think they're going away anytime soon. So, um, but one thing that's good about Microsoft Exchange, Windows Mobile, or Windows Phone 7, is that it works directly with your phone. Uh, one of my uh, coworkers can send me a PowerPoint presentation, upload it to the um, SharePoint server not publish it yet. It's not published yet. I can pull up that uh, PowerPoint presentation, edit it on my phone. At least the text part of it. I can just tap it out. Boom. You know, let's say there's a misspelled word or the words that they used wasn't, you know, uh, didn't flow correctly. So I can make the edits on my phone, hit save, automatically saves to the SharePoint server because I have a VPN connection to my local network. There is no other phone that will be able to do that unless someone actually develops an app that can do that. But Windows Phone 7 will have all that built in. So I think that's going to be the enterprise phone. I, I still believe that a lot of companies are going to be stuck on Blackberries because they have Blackberry, they have the infrastructure, they have, they're already paying for it. And uh, some companies have branched out and got iPhones for their employees. All right, that's all great. Well, and yeah, okay. I think, I really do believe that Windows Phone 7 is going to challenge the business market much more so than any other phone on the market outside of BlackBerry. So I think the competition is going to, believe, is going to be between Windows Phone 7 and BlackBerry. I just have a good feeling about that. It's going to be between those two. RIM versus Microsoft. RIM versus Microsoft. Apple is going to be competing with Android. That's always going to be that way. Uh, I know that Microsoft has been saying that their phone is going to be so much better than the Android, you know, the infrastructure and all that. Um, one thing that iPhone has some beat is that when you buy an iPhone, you're buying that phone with the OS built by one manufacturer with one set standard. The only difference is, is the memory. You can get 16 gigs or you can get 32 gigs. There's only two models. And if you get the iPhone 3, there's only the iPhone 3GS that's being sold right now. So when you go to the AT&T store, you're, when you say I want an iPhone, the only thing you got to decide is, do I want more memory? Do I want to pay more money uh, for the extra memory? Or would I be good with just 16 gigabytes of memory? Okay, decide this. Will 16 gigs hold all of your music and all your videos? Because music files will probably be the bulk of your memory on top of all the apps that you can download okay Windows Phone 7 is going to have that too and one thing that's good is is um, 
the specifications that they're putting out to these different manufacturers is that it's not just going to be a 16 gigabyte phone it's not 8 gigabytes I think the lowest you can get is 8 gigabytes and then you go up from there uh, so they're going to have these built-in uh, memory sticks on it I guess you can say um, built-in memory like the iPhone so that you don't have to carry an extra little card with you um, that's to be seen I don't know that for a fact but I think uh, Windows Phone 7 is going to be the phone that's going to challenge the enterprises that are out there today and I think that a lot of IT personnel are going to be moving over towards Windows Mobile Phone uh, Windows Phone in order to make sure that their infrastructure is capable of handling it and plus it's going to be cheaper than having a BlackBerry Enterprise server because if you have BlackBerry Enterprise you're going to have to outsource it to a place in Canada which is the reason why Saudi Arabia is saying hell the hell no I don't want to say the F word hell the no okay so um, with microphone or uh, Windows uh, Phone 7 I said I was about to say microphone phone 7 <laughs> with, with Windows Phone 7 people are going to be allowed to uh, integrate with their corporate infrastructure database very well and we're not just talking about SharePoint we're talking about Access we're talking about Microsoft Office 2010 we're talking about uh, Internet Explorer, which, okay, it's not the greatest browser in the world. We all know that. But I can imagine that Windows Phone is going to be something nice to have. Um, it's all to be seen. We don't know for sure yet. I don't have a test model in my hand to really look at it and tell you guys how awesome the phone is. I just have a good feeling that it will be the bee's knees. Okay? Um, at this time, I am a little torn bet between my contract is up in October with AT&T and I'm going to either be between the Windows Phone 7 or the iPhone 4. The iPhone 4 is bad ass. I can say ass because ass is a word that's not blocked by the major networks. <laughs> I know this is a podcast. I can still be able to say whatever right I want, right? Um, the iPhone 4, Windows Phone 7. That's what I'm going to be stuck between. Uh, I am personally, there's nothing wrong with Android. I think Android is a powerful phone. I just don't want it for myself. And I am entitled opinion. I hope I don't lose my Android audience behind this. But Android is a powerful phone. And I'm sure that if anybody who is a developer, it's probably easier to develop a uh, Android application than it is to design for a Windows or for um, for for Apple. I can imagine that I can see, and it's open source, so it's it's not like you have to get a license or you have to upload it to some type of marketplace. You can just have it on your site. You can just, people can come download. You can pay for it. They don't and it's all there is to it. But with the Apple application, you can install applications that are not available on iTunes. However, it is a little bit harder to do. And there's a lot of people who would rather have that marketplace available for them to download. An Android user is usually a person who knows what they're doing. It's just like if a person went out and bought a, um, a Linux computer or they bought a computer and then they installed Linux on it. You have to know what you're doing to use it. Um, in Android, same thing. You have to be somewhat familiar on how to do Android in order to work with it and to make it do what you want it to do because it's not going to be easy. Whereas iPhone, it is so dumbed down. It is so dumbed down, okay? That it's just too easy to use, really. Windows Phone 7 is to be seen. We don't know yet. Um, it, the videos that I see on the internet seem promising. I can't really tell you if it's going to be easy to use, hard to use, or somewhere in the middle. We're going to see. 
and uh, I'll be right back in a few seconds with MobyCast. Welcome back to MobyCast. This is Antonio Edward. And um, just real quick, go to Facebook.com, search for MobyCast Moby, and you'll be able to find me that way. There's a link on my site to Facebook. Um, I got 23, uh, actually I got a few users on there, which I'm very proud of. Not just 23. That's I am at, has 23. Um, just kind of talk about myself really quick for those who don't know me. <laughs> my name is Antonio Edward and um, I am starting a mobile community website and basically I'm doing everything that's behind the scenes right now. The website is up, it is live, it's ready to go, but it's I still needs a lot of work to it and um, that's going to be, it's going to be in the alpha stage for a while. So if you want to check it out, let's go to the letter I, A, M, A, T, dot Moby. That's it. I am at, but it's not just I am, it's I A M A T dot Moby. Okay. Um, I know when I tell people it's I am at, um, they, they type in I, the letter M at, and uh, that's not the domain. I don't own that one. <laughs> but um, I am at it's the website. It's up and coming. It's location based, and um, it's going to be out really, really soon. Here, really excited about it. Please check it out. Log into it. Uh, register, and um, we'll get some emails coming out pretty soon here. But um, I'm also um, I work at LifeLock. Um, that's one of my jobs. Also, um, before that, I worked at University of Phoenix for and I did staff support, which is a uh, service desk. And um, let's see, before that, I was in the U.S. Army. Uh, I was in the United States Army. I was an Apache crew chief. I was in um, Hanno, Germany. I did Iraq for 15 months. And I also was stationed in Fort Bragg and did some training at Fort Hood. And uh, so that's all good there. Uh, Let's see what else I can say about myself. Um, right now, I currently have a HTC Pro, uh, Peer, which is a it's an okay phone. It's not the best in the world. I hope that when the phone seven is gonna it's gonna outperform any phones um, from the past uh, Windows based phones and you know Windows six, Windows five, and below. Um, Android, iPhone, they're gonna be competing with each other. That is the competition right there. BlackBerry, Windows Phone 7. It's going to be a completely separate competing force. Windows is advertising that they're, comp they're going to competing with everybody. Okay, Microsoft, forget about it. iPhone, you're not going to be able to touch the iPhone market. There are too many people buying iPhones. There are just too many people uh, who loves iPhone apps and the ease it is so easy to use it is versatile it's it's fun the only thing that is bad about Apple is you have to take your phone into a Apple store to get the battery place and it's the, it doesn't come with insurance with AT&T you gotta get the Apple One Care which costs extra money okay yeah 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 okay Android um, it's made by different manufacturers so uh, you just have to do some research to find out which Android is the best for you. You know, you want to make sure you get something that's high speed with a lot of memory and uh, and a lot of room, to, a lot of room for growth. With um, iPhone, you're kind of stuck with the architect. There's not a whole lot of change there, and that phone will probably be good for up to three or four years before you have to replace it. Um, replacing the battery is something that you have to do often, um, like maybe every six months to a year depending on how often you charge it and uh, Blackberries, very sturdy phones very very sturdy direct to the point no 
bells and whistles. There's not really much to it, but just a Blackberry. There isn't really much to the Blackberry. Blackberry has not changed anything. In fact, I don't think RIM or Blackberry or both, <laughs> really, I don't think they're going to do anything. I, th I just, I don't think they're going to be like, oh, you know, Windows Phone 7 is coming out. Oh, and uh, the Android and iPhone. Nope. Blackberry is still the same. There is not much to a Blackberry. Calendar, email, you can download a few programs and games. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. But iPhone definitely has not beat on the amount of stuff you can get for Blackberry uh, for iPhone. Android is definitely coming along there and uh, is going to be competing with it. Windows Phone 7, still to be seen. I am a little apprehensive about getting the Windows Phone 7, though. I am. I am a little like, mm, I don't know if I really want to get it because it has not been proven. And would I be disappointed if I got the phone and I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I just go ahead and get the iPhone 4 like I want it? You know, so who's to say? Uh, that's to be seen. And I can't wait till next month um, to um, to check it out, so I can um, pick it up, play with it, see how it works. I hope that the AT&T store will have some apps already installed on it. I, as I understand, Microsoft Tag Reader is going already going to be a, is already going to be a, installed already. It's going it's already going to be a part of the package, which is a good thing because uh, if Microsoft wants to push Tag Reader, they're going to have to make sure that it's installed automatically. Okay, uh, I can imagine that the Android, the feature Androids, why we have QR code readers because Google is all about QR code. They're not trying to get with Microsoft at all. Uh, they're like in competition with each other, as you all know. So Windows Phone 7. Well, here's one of the bad news. Just one little bit of bad news, which I think can hurt Microsoft. AT&T is a very large company and they have a lot of people on it but so does Verizon Verizon probably holds second in the amount of um, people that subscribe to their network T-Mobile Sprint you kind of forget about those people you really do you're like T-Mobile uh, oh yeah yeah that's right yeah, T-Mobile yeah I forgot about them Sprint oh Oh yeah, yeah, Sprint, Nextel. Yeah, they bought Nextel years ago. Yeah, or Nextel bought Sprint, who knows. Okay, Verizon, AT&T. Those are the two competing uh, cell phone networks out there. You also got the others out there like Cricket and a few others that offer those cheap um, wireless services, um, unlimited minutes and all that stuff. But we're not gonna count those. We're gonna talk about AT&T. We're also gonna talk about Verizon. DSM carriers such as AT&T AT &T and T-Mobile are going to be carrying Windows Phone 7 this fall. According to a website at computerworld.com, I'll post a link to the site. Um, you'll see it there in, in the same article. Microsoft chose to focus on delivering a great GSM version to the world first and then a great CDMA version in the first half of 2011, a Microsoft spokesperson said Friday by way email, and that's according to Computer World. Okay, Computer World is a well-known magazine. I'm reading off their website. Uh, they've been putting out magazines for years, uh, even way before the internet came out. And so, is that going to really make it? Shouldn't they have said, if I was Microsoft, I would have said this, okay, AT&T, Verizon, being the largest carriers, I would have put out two great phones. One for one for Verizon, one for AT&T. If a person wanted to, they could jailbreak it and hook it up on their Sprint or T-Mobile. Then I would have ventured off and did the other uh, cell phone carriers. But who am I to say? Because maybe they just want to concentrate on GSM only and that's it 
So, you know, it's probably some reason to the nun logic of it, I guess. Um, maybe it's inevitable for them to concentrate on AT&T since iPhone is with AT&T. I don't know. Um, they they don't have a direct explanation for it. All they said was, we just want to develop a damn good phone on GSM first, then branch off and do the CDMA later. Most corporations, when they get a cell phone contract with a cell phone provider, they usually go with AT&T and then with Verizon. So they're going to be losing a lot of that Verizon customers that are with the major uh, corporations. Because I have a good feeling that the major corporations are going to lean towards Windows Phone 7 over BlackBerry. I just have a good feeling about that, but I tell you, Microsoft, you got to advertise, advertise, advertise like any no tomorrow. And don't let, don't rely on the, the manufacturers to do it for you. Motorola has been putting out those Android commercials. Since Apple designs the OS that make the damn phones, they do everything. They package it and they sell it. Apple, when they advertise, they're advertising for themselves only. They build it, they make it, they design it, bam, there it is. Whereas Microsoft just designed the OS, and that's it. Just the OS. Whereas all these other manufacturers, just like their Windows computers, are going to be designing phones on their own. And it's going to be up to the manufacturers to advertise it? No, Microsoft. No, no, no. Just like you did with Microsoft Windows 7. You have to think about advertising for Windows Phone 7. You go and advertise just like you did with Microsoft Windows 7 for 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 desktops and laptops. You're gonna to have to work with some developers like Dell to come out with some pads to compete with the iPads. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, where it's to be seen I am very excited about what's going to be happening with this okay I'm very excited about how this is going to turn out I'm very excited about a lot of different things I just hope Microsoft is, is ready I just hope they're ready and I hope they're ready to push it out there to make it available for the general public and we'll see what happens We'll see what happens. My name is Antonio Edward with MobyCast. Again, my website is mobycast.mobi. That's M-O-I-C-A-S-T dot Moby. Get me up on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash MobyCastMobi. Okay? I couldn't get MobyCast by itself because evidently there's another MobyCast out there. Okay. But not a podcast. It's like something else. Wikipedia one day you'll find out load today for me because I already got a movie cast podcast going um, then Facebook you have to do a search because it's not simple like facebook.com actually no my apologies it's I meant facebook.com slash mobicast mobi okay and hit me up let me know what you think tell me what you, what's on your mind you can also comment on the site and say yo okay and I want to thank you very much for listening to uh, mobicast my name is Antonio Edward have a great day, night, evening, afternoon. Peace.
ചെയ്യാം